Today we are going to do a full face of Vive Beauty, which is Jamie Genevieve's makeup brand or cosmetic brand. I actually really, really adore this brand as a whole. Spoiler alert. Uh, there are products that are definitely standouts over the others. There's a couple of products that I don't super love, you know, all of that normal jazz with makeup products. But as a whole for the brand, I do really tend to enjoy it. Uh, and I thought that I would go through all of the makeup products that I have from the brand, give you guys my thoughts and opinions. Uh, it's going to be like talking head, but also I have like B-roll footage of the products themselves and then me applying the products. So it's like, you know, a mixed fancy bag. Hopefully this sounds interesting to you. If it does, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get into it. So Vive Beauty was started by Jamie Genevieve, who is a YouTuber, and she is incredible. I have followed her for years and years. She's one of those girls that you just like, I'm like, I just want to be you when I grow up. Like, I love her accent. She seems like a sweetheart, but she's like effortlessly cool. You know what I mean? Like everything she does and everything, her makeup and all of that, like she just seems effortlessly cool. I'm like, how do you do this? Anyway, she's amazing. Um, but let's talk about the brand itself and put her aside. Now, the brand, it says basically, you know, encourage a self-belief. If, if I'm looking down, by the way, my computer with all my notes and everything is down here. Encourage a self-belief, delivers lashings of confidence. Um, the products have no rules. They're versatile, easy to use, warm, relatable, accessible, yet sophisticated, um, high performance makeup staples that are also vegan, cruelty free, paraben free and gluten free. So kind of awesome what the brand really stands for and what they're, they're aiming to achieve with it. Now, when I say a full face of Vive, makeup she doesn't have like foundation and mascara and brow products and stuff so it's pretty much anything that she has available then it's the full face that's making up of it so i'll link everything down below like from the brand that i use but also i'll link all of the other makeup that i'm wearing on my face today as well um just a quick reference guide i'm wearing the milk hydro group primer and the pure four in love four in one love yourself your foundation um and then everything else apart from say mascara and brows is pretty much vive beauty you can only get vive from the website directly vive Dot com or vivemuse.com, Colt Beauty, Harrods, and Space NK. So I don't believe she's tapped into like other countries, retailers like Sephora US or anything yet. Um, I personally like to purchase my Vive products off of firstly Space NK because they're shipping super quick and it's you minimum spend of like 50 Australian dollars for free shipping. Um, so I like Space NK first and then Colt Beauty. I would shop off the Vive website because normally they have exclusives and exclusives and stuff. But the shipping was like 40 to 50 Australian dollars when I went to buy off there once. And I was like, no, thank you. No, thank you, ma'am. So personally, my favorite is Space NK, but you know, it's up to you. She does actually have a primer called the Skin Nova Primer, but it has coconut in it. So that's going to give me acne and a rash because I'm, a, I, I'm really sensitive to coconut in makeup ingredients. So as much as I love the tubes, I'm not willing to give myself, you know, acne for a product. So, you know. I don't have a thought or an opinion on her primer. I would like to try it though. So the first product that we're going to talk about is the Vive. I'm going to stop saying Vive because it's all Vive. The Modern Radiance Concealer. Now there's 20 shades in this concealer in total. So a pretty decent range and it is 44 Australian dollars. So depending on where you live in the world, obviously your currency and the amount of that product is going to be different for you. The explanation of this concealer is... Uh, it'll banish dark circles, hyperpigmentation, imperfections. It's a hydrating liquid formula. Um, it's infused with hyaluronic acid, a unique skin thirst relief complex and phytoradiance complex. It's a skin loving concealer um, and can be multitasking as well. What really comes to mind when I think of this concealer is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Concealer. These are pretty much the same concealer, honestly. And this morning when I was just sitting there thinking about it, I was like, gosh, it just, every time I use it, it reminds me of this concealer so badly. The whole consistency of this concealer is just exactly like this. So I got a little bit nerdy with it because it really was bothering me. And I was like, I wonder how many ingredients in this concealer and this concealer are the same. So I pulled the ingredients of both of the concealers up and the first eight products, give or take, I might not be counting that exactly correctly, but the first eight products of each of these concealers are exactly the same, exactly the same. And that's when I was like, bingo, these really are pretty much the same concealers. So under those eight ingredients, there's like some that's probably the same, but also, you know, like added extras in this one has caffeine and I don't think this one has that kind of a thing. So considering that the top eight um, of the ingredients list is exactly the same as each other, it's a 
pretty decent kind of formulation that shows that these are almost the same product. So I guess what to take away from that is if you know that you love this concealer, then you will absolutely adore this concealer. Or if you've been wanting to try this concealer, but you don't want to fork out the hundred or whatever dollars it is to try it, then pick up the Vive one because it's honestly pretty much the same. Now, in terms of the performance of the Modern Radiance concealer, it's okay. It's definitely not the worst concealer I have ever tried. It's definitely not. It's also not the hands down best. It's just a solid down the line, good concealer. First of all, this has hyaluronic acid in it. So if your skin loves hyaluronic acid, you'll actually probably really like this concealer. If you like a more, th and I'm gonna say the word thicker and it's gonna turn a few of you off. And I don't mean thicker in a bad way, but it is a little bit of a thicker formula than say the Huda Beauty Concealer, the Faux Filter Concealer. That's quite a thin consistency. So if you want something that's a little bit thicker and more creamy on the under eyes, then you'll, again, you'll really, really like this Modern Radiance one. I don't mind it. I find I need to use a really small amount in very thin layers to get it to work well for me because if I apply too much at all, like just a, even just a little bit, it gets very cakey on my under eyes and on my skin. So I definitely need to, and you'll see in the demo that I've applied really small dots in thin layers. And the first two small layers, I um, blend it out with a sponge because I find that that works best. And then the very last one, when I want to add the most coverage, I apply a really small amount and blend it out with a brush to kind of like get that extra level of coverage. Granted, I do have dark circles, hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, texture, they're dry under eyes. You know, they are more difficult under eyes to conceal than say, you know, others, depending on, you know, your preferences and your under eyes and all that kind of stuff. So I do always, regardless of the concealer, use thin layers to build up that coverage level. It's just what I found works best for me. Um, but if I, I just noticed with this one concealer that if I build up or use too much product in one layer, even slightly too much, it just gets too heavy and cakey looking on my under eyes. I do find this concealer as well isn't as long wearing as other concealers, I do find probably around that six to eight hour mark, it starts to look a little bit haggard and it does start to break up a little bit. So it's not the most long wearing concealer for me and my under eyes. Overall, it doesn't look too, too bad on my under eyes, but I wouldn't say that it makes them look incredibly stellar. Next up, we're gonna talk about the Modern Powder Perfector. So this is her, uh, Vives setting powder. So as you can see, I've used quite a lot of this. I've, I've hit pan on it. Now this is 56 Australian dollars and it comes in four shades. So, you know, shade range could always expand and get better, but it's it's not too bad considering it's an independent brand. So the description of this particular product says, gone are the olden days of blotchy patches and cakey finishes because it's high time you said hello to a naturally perfected base. Infused with hyaluronic acid and collagen amino acids, this soft matte powder sits weightlessly on your skin and seamlessly blends into your makeup just the way you want it to. Um, smoothing out the appearance of your skin to reveal a photo ready face. It reduces shine and blurs away imperfections quicker than you can say blot. Here's my thoughts around this powder. And you can see in the kind of demo that I did use this on my under eyes and on my face. And it is actually a lovely shade that I can use this particular product on both my under eyes and my face. So quite nice because normally um, the powder that I use on my face will make my under eyes look darker for some reason. And this is a nice powder. Again, if your product, if your skin, sorry, loves hyaluronic acid, like if you know it just loves hyaluronic acid, you will really like this powder because it is quite lovely. My skin doesn't overly love hyaluronic acid. It seems to have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it in terms of that it can... When hyaluronic acid is in makeup products, I tend to find it can make my skin look a bit cakey for some reason. It's just always been the way, no matter the product, it seems to be that hyaluronic acid ingredient. This one's not too bad though. Um, on my under eyes, you'll see in the demo, I apply it on half my face first and then show you guys the comparison. And you'll see on the instant like one half that it really does perfect the skin. It's, it sets my under eyes lovely. It makes them look smooth um, and non-textured, all of that jazz. It really does wipe away all your pores and really set the face. It does look quite lovely. The thing that I found with this powder though, is that it isn't super long wearing and it isn't going to set your face for like an eight to 12 hour period, like say the Laura Mercier setting powder will. So again, if you have dry skin to normal skin, you will really, you'll find this powder enough. But if you do have that combination upward skin, you're going to need to take this powder with you throughout the day 
to re keep resetting your face because it will start to like get glowy and kind of oily as the day wears on. I also find that, for example, you guys might know from my other videos that I normally love to apply my face powder with a powder puff, especially when my skin is like that combo oily side of it, because I like to really press the powder in and set it and forget it. But I've noticed if I use this one with a powder puff, it really does apply quite cakey. It's like too heavy on the skin. It's too much product on the skin, even if I use just a small amount. For some reason, this powder just really likes to be applied with a kind of just like a normal powder brush for example I like to use the BK 104 because it's kind of like a fluffier type of powder brush it doesn't like anything too dense at least from from my experience my relationship with this powder for my skin type just keep in mind this is all my personal preference and all based on my experience and my skin type you might have a very different experience based on your skin type we're all different we're all gonna re react differently to products so just keep that in mind but overall with this powder, it's kind of like a love-hate relationship where when my skin is feeling a bit drier, I really, really, really love it. And then when my skin's kind of in that combo phase, like it's summer right now, so it is in that combo phase, uh, I don't love it as much. So it just depends on where I'm at with my skin at the time. We're going to talk about the Lip Do, which is basically a lip gloss and a lip balm or like a lip oil and a lip gloss combined. And there's six mil of product in this particular product and it has a 12 month expiry and it is 34 Australian dollars. So the description of this one is basically bridging the gap between a lip oil and a gloss. Um, it comforts and softens dry lips all while casting a non-sticky reflective sheen. It doesn't have any sticky feeling at all to it and it has good to skin ingredients. Um, so it's infused with raspberry seed oil extract, which is a powerful anti-inflammatory ingredient, um, green tea extract, and it soothes and softens chapped lips. Now I have the shade Rosa. It comes in four shades. There's like a goldy fleck, like clear goldy one, and then other shades as well. I picked up Rosa because I love this like kind of rosy pink and I love this product. I actually would love to have every single shade of this product. I think it's flawless. The fact that she calls it a lip oil and a lip gloss with no stickiness, 100% agree. 100% agree. It is delightful. It nourishes my lips. I have sensitive lips. A lot of glosses will actually dry them out. This does not do this it, that at all. It absolutely hydrates my lips. It doesn't feel sticky. It's actually quite long wearing for a lip oil as well. And I love the tint that it gives. I love the look that it gives. I honestly love every single thing that there is to say about this lip do product. It is beautiful. Let's talk about the Skin Do. The Skin Do is one of my all-time favorite cream highlighters. It really is. As soon as I tried this product, I fell head over heels in love with it. Now it's 38 Australian dollars and it does only come in the one shade. However, I really do feel like this one shade will be very, very versatile to pretty much all skin tones because it is this kind of deeper gold, um, color to it. But when applied to the skin, I find it to be quite colorless, just a glow in all of the right ways. So I do think that this would be quite versatile. And I dare say this is an incredibly po popular product because she released an extra large size recently for the holidays. So I'm guessing this is quite a problem popular product for her skin, uh, for her line, sorry. The description of this is, the Skin Do is designed to deliver a glossy veil to wherever you might fancy. Um, face, body, the liquid highlighter is crafted from good to skin ingredients to achieve natural bouncy finish that complements its golden glow. Um, kind to all skin types, the ultra luscious formula goes beyond makeup and is even infused with the likes of squalane to promote a supple hydrated finish. Anti-inflammatory sunflower seed oil to calm and smooth your skin um, and a whole heap of other, I guess, skincare ingredient products that she has put in there. I love this stuff. I mean, you'll see as I apply it, it applies so flawlessly. I apply it over powder. I never have found it to lift my powder products or anything like that. It is delightful. I quite often just wear this on its own without the powder products on, over the top, like without a powder highlighter over the top. I don't feel the need to set it or anything. And it just adds such a juicy, textureless glow to the skin. 
I really, really like this. Like, I really, really like this. This is hands down my favorite Vive product out of her whole line. It really is. Like, I will be repurchasing this when I use it up. It's flawless in my mind. Now we're gonna talk about the Dimension Face Palette. So this is the four in one. It has a bronzer, two blushes, and a highlight all in a powder formula. It is 77 Australian dollars and it comes in two shades. I would love to see the shade range expanded on this, but I do get she's a smaller brand. And the, normally with face palettes, I kind of get a bit funny when they're not like fully inclusive. I'm like, what's the point? But she does have single bronzers, single blushes, and single highlighters that I do think are quite inclusive. So I'll give her half a mark for that. So the description of this one. So the highlighter is a new V formula that lends luminosity to the high points of your face with natural but noticeable multi-dimensional radiance. As for the bronzer, you'll be pleased to see one of Vive's best sellers. So Modern Bronzer's buttery formula allows you to build for a lip from within glow to sculpted sharp definition uh, the award-winning sunset blush you love from the brand well now there were two, now there are two new exclusive shades for you to rave about creamy and finely milled this must have delivers a warm flush to cheeks with a soft satin finish so the highlighter is a completely new formula but the bronzer and the blushes are the exact same formula as her singles so i can't speak to the single highlighters because i do not have one of those when i picked up all of my vive products i was trying to pick up as many products as i could for the best cost of cost value because I'm not made of money, um, which is why I picked up the face palette. So let's talk about the bronzer first. Now the bronzer is delightful. I truly enjoy this bronzer. I think it is absolutely lovely. It is quite pigmented. You'll even see, I think when I apply, depending on how well it picked up on camera, when I apply this bronzer, I kind of accidentally applied a little bit too much to begin with, but you'll see as I just tap it out and blend it out, it just basically blends out to be completely smooth and seamless into the skin. So even if you do apply a little bit too much of this bronzer, it really will just blend out so lovely and softly. And I really like it because it is quite smoothing on on the skin it is quite perfecting on the skin it is not radiant but it's not matte it's a very lovely natural finish so it's not flat on the skin I have really come to realize about myself I don't like a super matte bronzer I do like it to have a little bit of glow without glow to it so that it doesn't look completely flat on the skin if I was to use this up completely I actually would buy her single bronzer as well because I, I genuinely think this is a lovely, lovely product. The powder highlight is exceptional. It truly is. So if this is a new formula, I think she should definitely, I, again, I can't speak to her single highlighter formula, so I'm not sure how they compare, but I think she should come out with this formula in singles then because this is so glowy but so non-texturizing on the skin. It is so smoothing. So I did put it over the top of the skin do, which you would have seen. And so you're not getting like the full effect of it. But even when I wear this on its own, it's so glowy and non-texturizing and smoothing, which is so rare to come by for a highlighter. I think most people would be able to wear this formula and not have it accentuate any like texture or anything. Truly, truly such a beautiful flawless highlighter, like one of my favorites in my collection. These two blushes, I really like this formula. It's a soft, buildable, lovely formula. It really, really is. I do super enjoy the formula. It's not too pigmented. It's buildable. It's blurring on the skin. It's quite long wearing. I don't mind these shades, but they are very muted. So I, even me who like, if I'm just wearing say a makeup look like this, where it is kind of more muted, then it's fine. But I did take this uh, face palette away with me to like for a weekend. And I did find myself, I only took these blushes. Like I literally only took this one and I found myself wanting something a bit brighter, or a bit more poppy quite like consistently. So if you're someone that knows that you really only wear these neutral tones, of blushes then you'll really appreciate them but I did find that I would sometimes be looking for something with a little bit more oomph, a little bit more impact to them but in saying that because she does have a line of single blushes that are quite impactful and brighter bolder colors the formula is delightful and I will actually eventually pick up a single one of her blushes in that more impactful shade because the formula is stunning so overall with this face palette I actually really really enjoy it I use it a hell of a lot more than I ever would have anticipated I would have and I am I'm happy I purchased it a product that I actually haven't used in today's demo I just if I can be honest I didn't want to <laughs> I wanted to use one of the palettes um this is one of the shimmer ones 
like one of the shimmer eye ones. I have the shade, I think it's Silver Mink, yeah. It is a $30 cost. Now the description is expertly packaged and engineered to stay creamy and pigmented. The eye-catching shimmer eye ones are like eyeshadow sticks but better. One swipe multitasking formula that primes and colors at the same time. These are actually pretty good. I really quite enjoy these. I did use this in my full face of Vive, which will be linked down below for you, like my very first one. And I, I really do enjoy this formula. It doesn't crease on my hooded eyes. It is really easy to apply. And if you want like one, a one and done cream eyeshadow stick, I think this is a really, really good formula. When I applied it on the full face of Vive over the top of the powder, uh, the matte shadows, it did kind of mix with them a little bit funny but i think that was probably user error to be fair at the time um but this is a lovely lovely shade as well i actually would be really interested to try her matte ones i think they would be lovely as primers and bases for your eyeshadow looks so overall like i like this enough that i'm interested in purchasing other shades to try let's talk about the eyeshadow palettes shall we so i have two out of the three that she has. The first color story is very wearable. I know a lot of makeup artists actually really enjoy it, but I just don't think I would get a hell of a lot of use out of that color story for me personally. I'm not super into warm tones. So when I tried the brand first up, I picked up Muse first because it was the one that interested me the most and 90s wasn't out then. This is 90 Australian dollars and also 90s, which is her most recent cool toned, you know, 90s inspired palette. This is also 90 Australian dollars. So they're not cheap. I mean, it does depend on the exchange rate. Sometimes when the, when the Australian dollar was a bit better, these were like 75. So it just depends for Australians on the exchange rate. Here's the thing with these eyeshadow palettes. And if you watched my eyeshadow palette ranking for 2022, you kind of know how I feel about them already. They're not my favorite. The 90s one in particular, which I've only used, I don't know. Yeah, I used one of the silver shades in the look. As you, as I kind of talk about these, you'll see me putting the look together. I used one of the shades in this in the video, but I do have a review of this palette. I will link that down below for you if you want to see more in-depth thoughts. I don't like this palette. I really don't. I don't enjoy using it a whole lot. The metallics are fine. They're a little bit dense. They're nothing special to me. I have, you know, a lot of you did comment on my review of that saying the fact that these aren't high shine metallics actually appeals to you more. So that just depends on your preference. I just find these mattes, blech, like, I really do. I find them quite hard to work with. I found them patchy. I found most of them just look like the exact same shade on the lids. It just, there's not enough of a variance in this palette for these matte shades to actually work well together, in my opinion. So I found the 90s palette quite a miss. I really did. But the Muse, I really enjoy, which is the one that I'm using in this look. I find the mattes in this palette absolutely beautiful, creamy, blendy, uh, blendy, blendable. There's enough dimension in here. I mean, it is going to, like, most of the look is going to turn out. The shade, the, these shades are kind of same, same, but different. But these are going to, in my mind, these perform a lot better than the 90s palette. There is a little bit more dimension in here. I actually like using all of these mattes and most of these mattes as one and dones on the eyes. That's kind of how I like to use this palette. Again, this metallic formula is nothing super wowing to me. It's a little bit dense. It's not super high shine. I like my metallics quite sparkly. Um, but if you're not into that, then maybe you'll really like these. I do like this pink one. These two are just not tones, period. Like, regardless of the formula that I would super gravitate towards or wear, it's just not. And I knew that going into when I picked this palette up. So I'm not going to hold the tones or anything like that against it. But the formula itself is not my favorite metallic formula. But I, do, I, I don't mind this. And I know some people honestly think that the V formula is like holy grail to them. To me, it's not. But it's this palette for me is is quite lovely. I quite enjoy using it. This one is an absolute no. So yeah, take from that what you will. We just have the lip products left. So the Modern Lip Definer, I have the shade Bark, 32 Australian dollars. One of the best lip liners. I truly love it. Her lip products, she nails it, honestly. So uh, the Lip Definer description is a whether you fancy upgrading a simple lipstick look or you want to cheat your lip shape into something more befitting your mood, these multi-purpose pencils come with tips and tricks from Jamie Genevieve herself, ready and raring to help you overhaul or enhance. Uh, Long-lasting, highly pigmented, yet blendable and oh so creamy. Um, and there's a heap of shades and I agree, agree with that. These are incredibly easy to put on. They're highly pigmented. They're long wearing. They don't budge. 
lovely. Like, lovely would buy multiple shades of this formula. I think it is an impeccable lip liner. And I actually like the Vive lip liner more than even the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners, if that's saying something, right? Then we have the Modern Matte Lipstick Packaging like A plus in my mind. I think it's so stunning. 42 Australian dollars. So, you know, Jamie's brand is not a cheap brand by any means. It is, she really is aiming it at a luxury price point, at least in my mind. Um, so there's a heap of shades in these lipsticks. She has a heap of nudes. She has a heap of like more pinky tone ones. I have the shade 90s. Obviously I'm, I'm wearing it on my lips now. Love it. I love this lip color. It is perfection in my mind, truly perfection. The description of these is soft, comfortable, highly pigmented, hydrating formula, an absolute delight to use, she says, um, imparting intense bold matte color without making lips look flat or dry. And then for a lighter look, you can um, apply this with a less traditional blot of the finger um, or you can build it up, whatever it is. I agree. I think that this is a matte lipstick that is non-drying. It doesn't give you butthole lips. It's very long wearing. I mean, it's a lipstick, so it's not going to be like a liquid lip and last you all day, but it is quite long wearing. But the best part about this is that it is a matte formula that is non-drying in any way, shape or form. My, my lips even now feel very hydrated and comfortable. I think these lipsticks are one of the best formulas around. Like honestly, they really are. They're incredible. That wraps up my full face of Vive Beauty. Hopefully that was helpful in some way, shape or form or you just enjoyed it in some way, shape or form. I do have like a full face of Victoria Beckham as well that I recently did. This was a slightly different format to that one. So if you've seen both, can you let me know which format you prefer? This one I did like more b-roll and like talked through the products whereas with victoria beckham it was more like i was putting my makeup on as i was describing it so you know you might not care at this point but if you want to give me your feedback please let me know down below let me know what do you think of these beauty is it something you've tried i've when i've used them before and done reviews i do find it's quite a mixed bag in the comments of people that find it is really 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 not great versus people that absolutely adore it i really do quite enjoy these beauty. I don't think that her eyeshadows are, is where she shines. I don't, my personal opinion, but I do think her complexion products and her lip products are really solid. I really, really do. So I'm very excited to see what products she's going to release in 2023. It, it will be very exciting to see. So that is it. Let me know your thoughts. If you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. I truly, truly appreciate it. If you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope that you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.